So in today's video, I am going to discuss how to get the Humboldt Fellowship. And the Humboldt Fellowship is actually given by the Humboldt Foundation. And essentially, this is given to foreign researchers and here foreign is defined with respect to Germany. This fellowship is essentially given for postdoctoral candidates and also for experienced researchers who may be junior faculty at a given institution. So let's look at some of the aspects of the Humboldt Fellowship and how you can get it. Now essentially what this fellowship does is that it sponsors researchers and the good thing about this fellowship is that it does not care about your discipline or your nationality except that you should not be German. You also get lifetime support from this particular body which I will explain later. Now let's look at the two key parts of this Humboldt Research Fellowship. One is the postdoc program and second is the experienced researcher program. So again this is possible for people from all countries to apply excluding Germany and these fellowships are for 6 to 24 months regarding research stays in Germany. So now if we look at the postdoc fellowship this typically requires that you have a PhD and that your PhD was obtained less than 4 years from the date you have applied. And essentially this Humboldt postdoc fellowship comes with a stipend, travel expenses, there is a language fellowship prior to the beginning of the fellowship for 2 to 4 months and also you get a small stipend for your family. So if you are taking your spouse or children with you, you get some money for them. Now if you look at the experience research fellowship, this is for PhDs who have less than 12 years from the current date. So essentially your PhD should be less than 12 years from the date in which you have applied for this particular fellowship. Again you get a stipend, they pay for your travel expenses, they pay for a language fellowship and they give you some money for your family. Now typically the travel expenses will cover your travel to Germany and back from Germany and the stipend is sufficient to stay in Germany for a period of time. Now what are the issues which are involved in getting the Humboldt Fellowship? So I am telling it from my own particular experience in 2007 when I went for this fellowship and I would say that there are certain aspects about this fellowship which you need to keep in mind. The number one factor is that you need to find a host. And this host has to be a faculty member in a German institution, typically in a university. It can also be in a research center, but most likely it should be in a university. Now research centers broadly could cover the Max Planck Institutes, DLR, some of the national labs and so on. Now once you find the host, you need to write a proposal. And this proposal should be written in conjunction with the host because this proposal should be something that is of interest to you and that is also of interest to the faculty who is inviting you for this term because this person has to provide office space for you and also interact with you during this period. So there must be some thing which this person would gain from your visit. Now once you get the buy-in from the host as far as the research proposal is concerned, you write the research proposal and then you submit the application to the Humboldt Foundation. Now at this point you also need to give some references who will vet your work and who know you from the research community. So these references could possibly be senior professors or researchers in your field and these preferably should be from different countries and established scientists. So the more established the references the better your case will be. Now I would also say that you need to submit your CV and you need to have a good CV. There is no clear number of publications written here but I would say that over 5 journal publications in good journals is a good thing. Should not have too many people writing the papers with you. So 
the best situation is if you have written the papers with your supervisor and if necessary maybe with one more person at a later stage now for experienced researchers the cv should typically be stronger so it's a good idea to have maybe 10 to 15 journal papers but again this would be dependent on the field concerned the number of publications required would probably be more for chemistry and material science and less for mathematics or physics now one of the things which i found is that the most difficult part about the humboldt fellowship is trying to find a host and essentially this is because many of the german professors receive a plethora of emails from various people around the world and therefore they are stretched for time and for them to invite you to a certain place there must be a synergy between your research work and their research work and there should be some kind of complementarity also between what you are doing and what they are doing so this part of finding a host itself requires considerable research and it's not a good idea to start shooting off mails to various professors saying i want to work with you and so on so instead you need to figure out from your own research and literature survey regarding your own research as to who are the people in the field who would benefit from your visit and this is like to likely to be a case where you may possess certain skills which complement the skill set of the particular professor and the university at which they are working so in many situations multidisciplinary collaboration or a collaboration between a theoretician and an experimentalist or a computational person and a theoretical person these kind of situation gel out better in my personal situation i actually found some hosts who were people working on biology of insect flight and this went well with my aim at that point to get into the field of micro air vehicles so i drafted a proposal on looking at the aspects of the structure of insect wings and how this could lead us to a better understanding as far as micro air vehicles were concerned and i was pleased to tell you that this particular proposal was accepted and it resulted in two, two journal papers later now once you have applied for this fellowship you have given all the references and the proposal and so on you have to wait for some time because there are essentially committee meetings which take place so essentially these people send out your proposal and the details to some experts in the field they also solicit references from the people you have mentioned and then all these things are collated together and presented to a committee of top experts from germany and these people essentially decide the merit of your work whether your work will significantly advance the state of the knowledge in the field today and whether the proposal is worth funding and generally for the humboldt fellowship the acceptance rate is 20 to 30% keeps fluctuating in these regions and so it is quite a prestigious fellowship because it's quite difficult to get into now i personally feel some of the best parts about this fellowship is that you bring your own funding and therefore you are able to pursue a lot of research which is of interest to you also the possibility of working in a german institution gives you a different perspective onto the research problem and you will probably find that the german research institutions are much more practical in scope as far as the technology type of research is concerned and they are also more focused on applications and demonstrations and prototyping now one of the advantages of the fellowship is that they provide you with a german language program not only for you but also for your spouse and this is something which you can use to bolster your knowledge of the german language generally in the engineering and scientific fields you do not really need to know german to function in the german university system but knowing german will help you to get more close to your colleagues there because very often the meetings the presentations the classes and even the discussions during the lunch time is conducted in, in german so if you do not speak german or at least understand a certain level of german you will feel kind of left out
so this is something to keep in mind now while you are in germany one of the things one can do is travel during the weekends in the train so again germany has extensively beautiful countryside rivers churches scenery lakes mountains and so on and you should always try to publish some papers while you are in germany so this is something to make sure that your proposal is well used there are some conferences held in germany during this time where all the humboldt fellows get together and some of them make a presentation so this is also a good time to interact with the different fellows and maybe build up your network during this time now beside this particular humboldt fellowship there are a plethora of other fellowships offered by the humboldt foundation and these are not only there for postdoc scientists but also for senior scientists and very renowned scientists so you can consult their particular web page to find out more information on these uh, situations now one of the aspects about the humboldt foundation is that it provides you funding for later visits to germany so these visits can be one to three months long and they also give you book grants which which you can use to buy books they also provide some amount of funds to your host to support your research so this is a positive incentive on the part of the humboldt foundations to give something back to the hosts who are actually sponsoring this fellowship now as far as the web page is concerned it is humboldt-foundation.de and so if you go to this particular web page you will see all the details about this fellowship the application forms and the process about how to apply for it typically the meetings are held i think every quarter so again you can go for this fellowship at any time you need to prepare the application get the permission of your university or institute administration system and then apply for this if you are an experienced researcher of course if you are a researcher who is a phd student and then applying for a postdoc or a second postdoc then you can go for it using the postdoc level of research proposal and so on so again these were some concepts i had today as far as the humboldt foundation is concerned and how you can apply for the humboldt fellowship and i hope you benefit from this video thank you very much